Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In the video for his monthly prayer intention, the Holy Father Pope Francis has said that persecution of people due to publicly professing their faith cannot be allowed in society. This is the seventh edition of the Pope video, which is a ministry of the Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network. His Holiness said that persecuting people on the basis of their faith is inhumane. The Holy Father said that religious freedom is not limited to freedom of worship. Instead, it makes everyone appreciate others in spite of differences and recognize them as true brothers and sisters. Pontifical Charity, aid to the Church in Need, which supports the message of the Pope, said in its annual Religious Freedom in the World report that religious freedom is violated in around one out of three countries around the globe. A groundbreaking analysis of non-invasive prenatal tests, or NIPTs, published by the New York Times has found that tests give inaccurate test results up to 85% of the time. A significant number of abortions are carried out because the fetus is diagnosed with genetic abnormalities. As per the New York Times report, expecting women have been misled to believe that a few ampules of their blood taken in the first trimester will allow companies to detect severe developmental defects in the fetus. As a result, many parents do not seek follow-up testing. Over the last decade, prenatal testing has grown into a vast industry. More than a third of pregnant women in the United States opt for blood tests to check for developmental abnormalities. There are hopes that the new report might lead expecting mothers to reconsider undergoing an abortion. The Catholic Church teaches that abortion at any stage is wrong because life begins at conception. In Iran, nine Christians were released from jail last week pending a review of their prison sentences. Among the released believers is Pastor Matthias Hagdajad of the Church of Iran, who was earlier awarded five years imprisonment for threatening state security and spreading Zionist Christianity after a trial in September in 2019. Along with him, eight other members of his denomination were also convicted and they too received five years imprisonment. Without a hearing, the sentence of the pastor was upheld on February the 25th in 2020. However, in November of last year, the Supreme Court said his sentence would be reviewed along with those of the others. While the pastor was released on December the 30th, the other Christians were freed on New Year's Day, pending a review of their sentences. Recently, the top court in Iran had ruled that Christians worshipping in homes cannot be charged with sedition or other anti-national activities. Believers in the Irish Archdiocese of Tuam are eagerly awaiting the installation ceremony of the Most Reverend Francis Duffy on January the 9th, when he succeeds Archbishop Emeritus Michael Neary, who was appointed to the see on January the 17th in 1995. The installation will take place during Mass at 2.30pm in the Cathedral of the Assumption, and it will be attended by Apostolic Nuncio to Ireland, Archbishop Jude Thaddeus O'Colo, Archbishop Neri, and several other bishops, including prelates from dioceses in the ecclesiastical province of Tuam. Representatives of the clergy, religious and laity, will also be present. With respect to the current official guidelines in the wake of the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of invitees will be greatly reduced and the ceremony will be live-streamed. The Archbishop-elect has also appealed to believers to watch the ceremony online or to listen to the commentary on Galway Bay FM or Midwest Radio. Three churches in Istanbul's Kadikoy district were found vandalised on New Year's Day. As per news reports, the Kadikoy Protestant church in the Turkish capital was found spray-painted with Allah 1 on its doors. The vandals are yet to be identified. Two other churches in the same district also suffered vandalism on the same day. Churches across Turkey have also been intentionally damaged in the past. In July 2021, three people were charged with insulting religious values adopted by a fraction of society by dancing to loud music on the wall of the Armenian church of Surp Takavar in Kadikoy. In May in 2020, a cross outside the Armenian Apostolic Church dedicated to St. Gregory the Illuminator in Uksudar district was desecrated. The same month, a man was arrested in the Barkirkoy district for attempting to torch the entrance of an Armenian Orthodox church. Pope Francis has appointed Iraqi Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco, Patriarch of Babylon of the Chaldeans, as a new member of the Vatican Council on the Economy. One of the most prominent church figures in Iraq, Cardinal Sacco's appointment was published by the Vatican Press Office on January the 4th. 
The 73-year-old Cardinal will be a part of the Economic Council that supervises the economic management and administrative and financial structures and activities of the dicasteries of the Roman Curia and the institutions related to the Holy See and the Vatican City-State. Born on July the 4th in 1948, Cardinal Sacco was ordained a priest on June the 1st in 1974. He was consecrated to the Archbishop of Kirkuk on November the 14th in 2003. He was elected as the Patriarch of Babylon of the Chaldeans and Archbishop of Baghdad on January the 31st in 2013 and was confirmed by Pope Benedict the 16th on February the 1st that same year. The Christian Association of Nigeria has called on the federal government to take necessary action to prevent the abduction of school children and prove that it is in charge of the nation. Speaking to Nigerian outlet Punch, the vice chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, or CAN, in the northern region, Reverend Joseph Ayahab, said that if the government does not take measures to stop school abduction, then the government would have completely fallen and given in to Boko Haram-linked bandits. He also said that through abduction, the jihadists try to weaken the educational system and discourage the children from going to school. As per the United Nations Children's Fund November 2021 report, at least 1,440 students were abducted in Nigeria, with 25 attacks on Nigerian schools being reported between January and November. CEN is an official ecumenical organisation of churches across Nigeria. Commemorating the 7th anniversary of the martyrdom of the 20 Coptic Christians beheaded on a Libyan beach by members of the Islamic State, the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of Samalut in Egypt has called for a prayer initiative. The 15-day spiritual awakening, remembering the martyrs, will take place from February the 1st to February the 15th. The diocese has urged the faithful to participate in the liturgical and ecclesial events at the shrine built in their honour in the town of Al-Awar, where most of the martyrs hailed from. In a press release, the Coptic Orthodox Bishop of Samalut, Arba Pavnotios, invited everyone to appreciate the spiritual benefits and blessings that the Libyan martyrs can bring to fruition for those who celebrate their revered memory. In early January in 2015, the Copts, along with a Ghanaian co-worker, were kidnapped by Islamic State militants in Libya. On February the 15th, Islamist websites published a video of the group of Christians being beheaded after they refused to renounce their faith. The bodies of the martyred Christians were discovered in a mass grave near the Libyan city of Sirt in late September in 2017. In the execution video, it can be seen that many of the martyrs called on the Lord's name before they were executed. The Coptic Church has recognised the miracles attributed to the intercession of the martyrs. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.